We still do seven NUFC Matters show a week for free. But if you want to help support NUFC Matters, then there are a few ways of doing it. Hit the like button on each live broadcast and video. This helps the channel grow. Hit the subscribe button and select the all notifications bell so you don't miss a single show. If you want to help us financially, then you can join the channel using this button with the membership starting at $1.99 a month. Or you can drop us a donation in the chat using a super sticker. We're also looking for sponsors. If you'd like your brand advertised on the flies for the show and featured during the ad break, then email john at nufcmatters.com to arrange today. Welcome along to NUFC Matters Thursday night means Super Mac and Gibbo. Good evening, chaps. How are we doing, boys? Hello, John. Good Hi, to man. see you. Pre-recorded show, so we can't take your questions tonight, unfortunately. But as always, plenty to talk about on uh, the Newcastle United beat. And uh, first of all, uh, I did predict a win last weekend, John. You did. <laughs> you did. And it's getting flipping boring. I'm getting <laughs> sick of beating Fulham. I mean, we've played them three times this season. It's three wins, six goals scored, none conceded. Yeah. Can you believe that? With our defence, we've, we've let in no goals against against Fulham. And I looked it up, you know, the three games we've played them. In all three games, we've field our second-choice goalkeeper, Dubravka. And I looked at the back four, remembering last season, you know, when we were terrific and we let in the fewest goals and and Eddie said the reason I we've done so well is I won't tamper with the back four. I like the understanding. I'm ready to mix and match in midfield and up front, but not with the back four. In those three games we've played eight peop eight different people in the back four. When when you with Kraft and Hall getting in this time, we've had eight people in the back four. We've had the the cover goalkeeper, never the first choice goalkeeper, and we've let none in. I tell you what, it tells you how powder puff Fulham are, doesn't it? <laughs> Incredible that though. But um, I tell you what, we did see John. We saw we saw Eddie Howe lose his temper um, in that uh, in that game when he didn't see the desired effect. He'd given his he'd given his team talk. He'd uh, put the team out, and of course, once they cross the white line, there's nothing much more you can do. Uh, but then Debraka got told to go down after getting an injury. Mad Dog told him to get down. He went down. He was getting treatment. And Eddie Howe went through them like a dose of salts. We well, haven't seen that very often. No, I haven't. And uh, I was delighted to see it because uh, there's a need for that sometimes. You can't be, you know, you can't be the Fonz, Mr. Cool, all your life. At some stage, sometime, you've got to shake the bottle of pop and let the lid come explode off, haven't you? And then, yeah, I mean, their manager complained afterwards that we did it. So what? I mean, that's what people do. They do the right thing. Um, and... You know, we weren't waiting for the stretcher to come on with Dubrovka. Um, we, knew, we knew precisely what was happening. But, um, yeah, there was a need to get into them. And we got a response. And that is the good thing. The second half, we did ever so well. And, again, you know, I'm just thinking, Malcolm, you know, I looked at the team. It was our third match in a week. I was surprised at the initial lineup that we didn't start with Anderson and Barnes. And the only yeah. reason why we didn't, presumably, was because it was the third game in the week. And after long layoffs, could they physically stand it? But when they come on, they made a big difference, didn't you think, Malcolm? I, I yeah. thought both Anderson and Barnes made a difference. Yeah, absolutely they did. Um, and uh, and all of a sudden, we we became alive 
in attack, didn't we? You know, we'd, we'd sort of been so sleepy up until then. Um, and, and, and we started to actually uh, create a bit of danger on Fulham, who have been doing it to us um, all the while. How many shots of Fulham's went within a foot of the post just wide? There must uh -huh. have been a 10 or more. Um, and so, yeah, we, we, got, we had certainly got away with absolute murder in the first half, I thought, um, that uh, we just didn't play. But, yeah, things changed on, on the substitutions, John. Um, I, I, Barnes, he's, he's certainly looking, and I'm, I want to see him fully fit um, and, and really into things and just see what he can do. But my question is, Barnes plays very much on the left-hand side. What do we do with Gordon when Gordon looks as if he could get into the England side for the for the Euro Championships in the summer, playing on the left? You know, well, you play, you play him on the right. Bugger the European Championships. Well, I want to get into Europe with Newcastle yeah. United. And Gordon, I mean, you know, playing Trippier left back or uh, didn't stop Trippier being Newcastle's uh, yeah, England's true. right back uh, cover. So, I, I mean, if, I, if it was up to me, Mal, on Saturday against Spurs, I would feel Barnes on the left, Gordon on the right with Isaac. And I would play Anderson for Willock, whether or not Willock was fit, because it, it looks as if he probably won't be. But even if he was, he, did, he still didn't. He started, which I thought ahead of Anderson, which I thought was a surprise and was mm. just because Anderson couldn't last 90 minutes. But again, I thought he was a poor shadow of the Joe Willock we know that he can be. And yeah, so very I, much so. I'd play, much, I'd play Anderson ahead of Willick, uh, Malcolm, and I yeah. would play, I'd bring Barnes in on the left and play Gordon on the right because uh, Jacob Murphy didn't have his best game. Almiron is not a player he was at the moment. So that's what I would go with because, you know, with Gordon, with Gordon and Barnes and Isaac, Malcolm, all three can score. Yeah. All three can score goals. Yes, they can. <clears throat> And, and all types of goals as well. Um, but uh, uh, just remind me, so when when was Almiron on form then? Josh? I think it was two years ago, wasn't it? For a half a game in the second half at St. James's Park. I think yeah, it was. Something like that. <laughs> he he scored some goals. Marley did all right last season. Well, I mean, yeah, that was last season. Thinking... Everybody did all right last season, Steve. It's this season which has yeah. been the problem. Yes, and and really, I, I I think that Almiron he's had an absolute stinker of a season. I tell you, I tell you what, I'm just going to have a little bit of fun just to make Steve feel that much better. Bye, we've missed Chris Wood's goals, haven't we? He's he's hammering them in for uh, for Nottingham Forest. I mean, good gracious yeah. me! Just check, just check that out, John. You've stole me thunder a little bit. A short conversion. Best in the Premier League seasons since 2010-2011. At Chris Wood, conversion rate, 41%. There you go. Joe What's Willock, 34% in 2020-21. Cissé, 211, 212%, 33%. And Patrick Aubameyang, 32% in 2007-2018. Best in the Premier League seasons. That's another record that Chris Wood's breaking there, mate. You, you know you know why, pal? Because he never gets on the ball to be able to convert. You see, he, I mean, yeah, that's right. Ninety percent of the ninety percent of the time, he, he's not there. I mean, yeah. Yeah. let's put it this way: if he, if we would assign him this summer, because we've got problems up front with um, the fitness of uh, Callum Wilson, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, I think I would. Not be certain whether I was going to jump in the tine and bear in mind I can't swim or <laughs> or cut my throat, but um, I said I wouldn't certainly not be full of elation. I know, oh. do you realize, young Mr. Wraith, that when he scored a hat trick at St. James's Park earlier this season, that's more goals than <laughs> more Premier League goals than he scored in, throughout his Newcastle career at St. James's Park. Which there was is. 18 months, wasn't it? Right. 
in one in one afternoon he beat his own record over yeah. about two and a half years. Never there he is. Him. There he is. We miss him. We miss Chris. He was a good lad. Uh, had the best interest of the club at heart. Anyway, he's not the worst oh, striker anyway, we've had. He's a good lad and has the best interest of the club at heart. So have you, Steve, but I don't want you to play a centre forward for Newcastle. <laughs> Malcolm, <laughs> Malcolm, the the Malcolm McDonald derby was, 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 you know, I mean, I, I did see the the Fulham manager afterwards. He, he wasn't happy. He said he felt he felt his team deserved something. I, I, I've got to be honest on the balance of play. I think they did deserve something out of the game. They had better possession. No, probably. No, you, well, no, but, you don't. But, if you miss chances, Steve, but they didn't that's score. bad football. If they you didn't miss score. chances, that's bad football. And yeah. therefore, you deserve... Excuse me. Three games played, three defeats, no goals scored, six let in. Argue, you yeah. The oh, Fulham manager, argue why Fulham are, are as good as Newcastle. Not a cat... Chance. Yeah. No. Also, do you not feel that VAR is getting a little bit too big for its boots? Oh, I because mean, because with, with with the disallowing of of, of that um, first that goal, that was nonsense, was Malcolm. Nonsense, mm, wasn't that was it? Nonsense. It was sheer nonsense. The referee, he he was close enough to see it perfectly well, and then he's asked to go and look at the screen by VAR. And and they convert him. I mean, Burn. Was... Why? Because it, it seems that whenever they go to the screen, they change their minds and give a goal. And in what was it's going to happen, it. Malcolm? You're right. I've seen Mike. I've seen Michael Oliver not do it, but he's the best referee in the country, so he's strong. This this guy, in fairness to him, he's hardly had a handful of, of Premier League games. He's not mm. going to go against authority once he's called to the screen. He's not sure. going to overrule Vaughan and say, I'm sticking with my decision because his future would all be behind well, him. John, as soon as the referee is told to look at VAR, he should take his earpiece out so nobody can talk to him. Yep. Let him just judge it on his own and, and, and not hear anybody else's opinion at all. Well, we all know, don't we? We all know the minute the referee's invited to go pitch side, we know it's going to be a no goal or it's going to be a penalty yes. or something. It, it, it's automatic, virtually. Yeah. That's it. And to be truthful, Big Dan, yes, he went up all elbows and knees because the way he's built, he is all elbows and knees. But he was no, the, the guy he was going up with, the ball was nowhere near either of them. He didn't take out the defenders. The ball passed way over the way, way, way over the head out to Shaw, who finished well. It, yeah. it was an oh, absolute. You know, the Fulham manager goes on about we deserved something, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. If we had drawn not not because Shaw goal was off was chalked off, that would have been a travesty of justice. Yes, yes, it would. Um, and, and but um, also, I really, I I, I do feel that. Um, uh, when 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 the ball has, has left, uh, 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 the the both the, the two guys and they were sort of having a little tussle. When the Fulham player went down, have a look at his reaction. He got straight back up and continued with the game. There was no looking at the referee. There was no hand up. There was no that he wasn't looking for a foul, which told me. He didn't think he had been fouled. He had just come second best in a tussle. That's all. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, the good thing, Steve, is that having got ourselves under the cost, the seven points we've taken out of the last nine has revived our season, hasn't it? It's put us back in with a chance, a real chance of making Europe. And as we said on this programme last week, because we only got the draw against Everton uh, instead of the anticipated win, it meant we had to win at Fulham. But we did win at Fulham. So seven points out of nine was terrific because we would have took be winning both our home games and drawn away at Fulham. We would have took that before we started. So mm -hmm. we've got seven points out of nine. And that was a terrific return and has put us back in uh, with a big shout and makes a match this weekend. Absolutely huge, of course, because it's a, it is a big time match again. Because for for the first time in 
weeks, Spurs are back in the top four. Um, yeah. which means they've got something to play for up here because they they're back in the Champions League position yeah. and, and so have we. But John, did did you watch the Spurs Forest game? Yeah, I did, yes. Yeah. Well, to start, I thought Tottenham were absolutely awful. They were they were they were dreadful and uh and they they didn't give me the feel that that they really wanted a pl to play to win, um, and and Forrest were looking much much the better side. Chris Wood <laughs> scored, of course, um, but uh, and then badly I mean, missed. You love it, Steve, don't you? Badly <laughs> missed. Reverted to nature and stuck a ball past the, the outside of the post. Yeah, when it was more difficult to put it inside the post. Yeah, but look, but, look. but I, I would, I would hope that we are going to be a lot better organised than uh, than I saw from Forest against Spurs. But Spurs did not impress me one iota. I thought it was just Forest falling apart on the day. Having yeah, it, it was had funny, a good start. In, in lots of ways, Malcolm. Just thinking about it now, as you were making the point there which is absolutely true in lots of ways it reflected our game at fulham we were hopeless first off yes spurs were hopeless yeah. first off we win spurs win mm -hmm. you know it it, it yeah. was um, it, it was a lot of reflection but all i would say at this stage guys is that they're in a champions league position we're going for europe and by the way, the only we have done our favour to Spurs. We're not going to do any favour for them on Saturday because they're only in a Champions League position because we took six points off Aston Villa. Aston Villa mm -hmm. are level on points with them. We've took six points off Villa. They wouldn't be in with a shout of the Champions League if we hadn't taken six points off Villa. So we've done them the favour. So they can come up here now, drop the trousers and take a nice little smack on the bum, the same as they did last season. Yeah, yeah. We'll come to that game, of course, uh, towards the back end of the show. Just want to ask the lads about Joe Kinnear, um, of course, who passed away age 77 uh, at the start of the week. And um, John, I'll come to you first on this because we did a show with uh, Joe, um, if you remember rightly, at the uh, the Lancastrian Suite. I think we had him up here, and um, I got to meet him uh, on that particular night. I'm, uh, you know, I've got mixed opinions of Joe Kinnear. I mean, he was a he was a hell of a player. Um, you know, won won you know won some medals, of course, as a football player. Um, then went into management. Um, I think he won Manager of the Year at uh, Wimbledon. Um, oh, Wimbledon. The, the crazy, the crazy gang, but. Uh, one of one of football's characters came to Newcastle in that Mike Ashley era, which was never gonna was never gonna please Newcastle fans. Didn't completely disgrace himself, you know. Didn't take us down, and then had to and had to step upstairs because of health injuries. But what, what's your what's your thoughts on on Joe Kenny, mate? <laughs> that's a, that's a good one. Um, I on the plus side, and we all like to be nice because the, the guys just died, and we, you've got a lot of affection. He was one of the most lovable guys, one of the most crazy guys. He was the perfect guy to manage the crazy gang at Wimbledon because he was as crazy as the crazy gang. And, and so they got the best out of each other. Super player when he was uh, at Spurs. Um, he made his managerial reputation totally with Wimbledon against all the odds. I think they ended up fifth top uh, in the top flight, which for Wimbledon was absolutely mm -hmm. incredible and still is. Probably only topped by Leicester winning the the title, um, but I've got bless him. I've got a lot of affection. I, I I knew him when he was up here. I found him terrific company. I've got to say, and I've got to be truthful at exactly the same time. I think by the time he came up here, he was hopeless manager. Bless him. He he hadn't a clue by the time he came up here, um, and uh, he he just. Um, it was all wacky. Uh, he, he always had affection because he was a character, one of the biggest characters in the game. But he came up here at the end of his career and I thought was typical of the managers we were getting under Ashley. Because I think Chris Hewton apart 
where, who I did rate and thought did a terrific job for us under desperate circumstances. We didn't have a bundle of manager of the year uh, candidates, Joe and Mike Ashley, did we? And the simple reason for that is the real managers of the year wouldn't have wouldn't have accepted Ashley. Uh, when I'd put Chris Hutton in there, in fairness, I'd forgotten one name. I would put Rafa Benitez in there as well. As 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 managers under Ashley, they did well under very trying circumstances. Hard you've got us to Europe. Yeah, yeah, but he was as much use as a glass eye the rest of the time. I mean, uh, uh, I, I don't want to give him too much credit for that um, because you can have one great season. Yes, he got his fifth top, and that was blown not by Pardew, that was blown by Ashley, who decided in the summer because we got fifth top, we didn't need to buy anybody, and I think yeah. we bought one guy, didn't we, need that. Oh, so, and, and therefore, we went back to where we normally are which was 15th or 16th the following season. Absolutely hopeless. No, I can't put Joe Kinnear and me top two Newcastle, top 10 Newcastle United managers of all time. I've got to, I've got to be truthful about that uh, because I think he falls about 27 places out of that lot. Uh, he wasn't a good manager for us and yeah. he was past his sell-by date, but I've got a lot of fond memories from him as a personality and certainly what he did at Wimbledon They've got to put him up there. Um, but yes, if if there's a statue going up to Joe, it's got to be at Wimbledon. I don't want it to appear in next day Bobby Robson while there isn't one to Joe Harvey up here. I can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> Malcolm, did you come across uh, Joe as a player? I was a player, yes. Uh, he, he was a regular in the Spurs side um, for certainly the, all the years that I was at Newcastle. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, he was a very, very good footballer, very good indeed. Um, and of course, uh, um, it, it was Northern Ireland that he, he played for, I think. John was no, it was the Republic, Malcolm. Oh, it was the Republic, was it? it was yeah, the Republic, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> um, yeah, but a, an, an excellent player. That a little story on him, do you remember, John? Um, in my first season. Um, we played Crystal Palace in the opening game down at Sellers Park, and 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 the refereeing was as normal. And then on the Tuesday or Wednesday, we played at Tottenham. And what they did was uh, was a referee's clampdown without telling anybody. They didn't tell us. They didn't tell the clubs, they didn't tell the managers, they didn't tell the players. The referees just had a clamp down. And if and 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 uh, Tottenham had about five players booked, which was unheard of back in those days. Absolutely unheard oh, of. You could get away with murder. Joe Kinnear, he was actually booked because there was a, a long ball played up the line, um, I think by Frank Clark, um, but it was... It was going out for a throw in and Joe Kinnear, he went running across, caught the ball as it bounced up um, and went behind the line and took a, a quick throw in. And the referee pulled it back and booked him for handling it on the pitch. Because the ball hadn't gone out. Over the line. And we all just looked in utter amazement and and. Uh, um, and it made a bit of a shambles of, of the game, in all in all fairness. Um, and uh, I, uh, and it was Joe Kinnear that sort of set it all off that that night. With um, he had a with, ten, he had a tendency to set it all off, Malcolm. Did Joe? <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, but he, um, I, he, I thought he was an, an absolutely terrific player. It, it, it Wimbledon needed a very very special type of of management and he was perfect for it he gave it to them um but uh that it, it wasn't exactly um creating a, a a great cv for other clubs and all, also malcolm i felt when he i don't know about you but when he went to other clubs to manage after he'd been to wimbledon he didn't find a dressing room like the wimbledon one it was unique because they were all crackers, weren't they? Fashnu and Vinnie oh, Jones. Oh, yes. They were all yeah, crackers. Yeah. 
you go to another dressing room that's serious and, and scholars of football or whatever, and it's a different, it's a whole different ball game, and a different sure. type of manager. If you can manage Wimbledon, the crazy gang Wimbledon, mm -hmm. it doesn't mean you can manage Newcastle United or no. other clubs for that. Well, yeah, yeah. I think you're left with very few clubs that you could manage. If, can you remember, you really guys? Can. You might remember this, Steve. Can you remember when he come up to Newcastle? His first press conference he took in, in with the press. Somebody counted the number of times he swore, and I think it was fifty-seven in in yeah. the first minute and a half. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I mean, most of, most of those most of those deaths were. Uh, uh, I think they were put towards Simon Bird. <laughs> yes. Oh, I mean, you, you know the. His use of the English language was absolutely magnificent. And, uh, you know, it was very colourful and then um, he had a way with words. Mm. Definitely. Uh, one, word, one word in particular. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he, was, he was definitely a character. And um, I guess the other character uh, we'll have to talk about with this week's events is Mike Ashley. Um, we thought we'd seen the back of him, John. Uh, but he's back again. Uh, Newcastle, of course, uh, in dispute with Mike Ashley um, over the over the sale of the new Newcastle United shirt, which uh, we now know is going to be coming out. The home strip certainly comes out on June the seventh. Adidas mm -hmm. returning back to St James's Park to uh, to provide the strips after uh, a period with Castoria. Um, the the dispute seems to circle circle around the fact that Newcastle won't give Sports Direct the option of selling the strip. Instead, they're doing an exclusivity deal with um, JD Sports, who, of course, were Mike Ashley, I think, sworn enemies back in the day. I don't think they yes. get on very well with these people. Mm -hmm. um, was, it Dave, was it Dave Whelan's company? Dave, Dave Whelan. Whelan. Yes, Whelan. indeed, John, who, who was the chairman of, of Wigan for, Wigan. for yeah. many years. But And Dave Whelan, of course, had been a professional footballer and a, and the a, cup and a top footballer as well with Man United. Um, he was a, a, a hell of a player um, and, and got a serious injury. He was 24 when he had to retire. And, uh, and, and so... I, I love, it's, saying, saying, Steve, that um, Joe Kinney had a way with words, I think you had a way with words there when you said that Mike Ashley is in dispute with Newcastle United. He was in dispute with the Newcastle United fans for a decade and a half. Yeah. So, yes. so what's new, like? So what's yes. new? And there, there speaks the man who was barred from the stadium with all his fellow journalists at the Evening Chronicle for 18 months. I was. Months. I, I, 18 I was. Months, I was. Wasn't it, John? I, sorry? 18 I think, months. I think it's called telling the truth. I think you're not supposed to do that. With, yeah, yeah. With, with, oh, with yeah. No, naughty, yes. naughty. Eh? Hey? Naughty, naughty, John. I know, I know. Well, that's what he it's said to me. He said, naughty, 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 I banished. All I did was go upstairs with my mates and sit with my mates. And I got a good meal in a, in a bottle of wine. Whereas downstairs in the press room, I, I, I just got a, a right tanking off Newcastle United for, for telling the truth. But um, I survived it. And um, I'm back in there and... Um, I was there before him and I'm there after him. So, and weren't we all? All, yeah. all the guys on the terraces yeah, yeah. exactly the same way. Yeah. Great stuff. We are halfway through the show, chaps. Time for the ads. A big thanks to all our sponsors, Skips and Bins. Go to their website, skipsandbins.com. Email inquiries at skipsandbins.com or telephone 0800 25 45 25 3. Easy contract free and pay as you go waste collection. Thanks to Mr. Vicky's Sources, Handmade in Cumbria. Go to their website, mrvickies.co.uk. Email info at mrvickies.co.uk or telephone 01768 210102. Thanks to United Group Travel. Go to their website, unitedgrouptravel.com. Email info at unitedgrouptravel.com or phone 01670 632 460 or mobile 0791 666 Four one seven four. They're a local company from Morbeth, and there are no strangers on our tours, just friends you haven't met yet. Big thanks to Media Arts for all the help with the video side of things. And if you want to subscribe to the channel, hit the subscribe button under the video. Click the thumb up to like the video and click share to share to your social media. If you want to help the channel financially, you can pay a one-off £25 fee. You get a cup a scarf, a pen and a membership card and entry into the NUFC Matters monthly draw. 
Email john at nufcmatters.com for more details. Or if you've got a smartphone, scan the QR code now and it takes you straight to the membership pack. We also support the food bank on this channel. Go to nufcfansfoodbank.co.uk and you'll find the match day bucket. You can make a donation virtually today. You can also find us on iTunes, Spotify and other podcast providers. We also do events during the year. NUFC Matters Live will be at the O2 City Hall on Friday the 2nd of August for an evening with Rob Lee, one night in Antwerp. Tickets start at £15 and you can get them from ticketmaster.co.uk. An evening with the entertainers takes place on Friday the 24th of January 2025 at the Tyne Theatre and Opera House in Newcastle. Telephone 0844 249 1000 or visit the website tynetheatreandoperahouse.uk to buy tickets today. You can also catch me on the North East Footy Breakfast Show live on Toon Radio weekdays 7 till 9am on DAB, Smart Speakers and the Toon UK. Dot com. And don't forget, end of season party, 20th of July at the Irish Centre. Super Matt and Gibbo doing a talk in with myself, Ask George, and the Long Sands doing an acoustic set uh, in aid of Dementia Matters. Tickets are tenner at the Irish Centre, NewcastleLegends.com or NUFCMatters.com to buy your tickets today. And Peter Beersley at the Irish Centre on the 2nd of June. Tickets are £19 and uh, they are available on Welcher or go to NUFCMatters.com or NewcastleLegends.com to buy your tickets today. And Malcolm, you've got an event with Chris Cross coming up still? Yes, absolutely. On Tuesday, uh, 23rd of, of, uh, uh, of April. Um, it, it's just in a couple of weeks now. And uh, that's, um, that's all taking place in Wickham. If anybody... Um, would like to go. It's a tenner to get in, and um, uh, it, it, it's going to be a cracking evening because he is such a funny guy, but a brilliant magician as well. Um, and uh, uh, you can get tickets at, uh, if you log on to chris crosscouk Good stuff. Excellent. Get along, Chris. is a great lad, great magician, as, um, as Malcolm says, it'll be a cracking night. Uh, lads, want your opinion on uh, Jan Kuba Minte, who is currently plying his trade at Feyenoord. Um, he was in the starting lineup for Sunday's meeting with Ajax, and uh, he set up the opener, and he scored the second mm. goal and the fourth mm. goal in a 6-0 win. He was yeah. substituted in the 76th minute, got a standing mm. ovation, um, and uh, as he doesn't drive, he tends to walk home to the uh, back to his house, uh, where he's living at the moment uh, from the match. He had to get a, an escort from the club because he was mobbed by the supporters. <laughs> um, he seems happy out there at the moment. He is on loan. Um, he is a forward. Uh, he's 19 years of age. Um, we accept, I guess, that the Dutch league's not as not as good, maybe, as the Premier League. Um, but is he going to be the answer to our, our prayers, this Gambian international, Malcolm, next season? Do you think Newcastle might have a look at him in the pre-season and decide what they're going to do? Well, I would think that they're keeping their eyes on him now and, yeah. and, and having a good look um, towards the end of the season because they're going to have to make a decision on him. Um, and and there's, a, there's a whole variety of ways that they can move forward with him. Um, but uh, I, I think it... Uh, he, he must be absolutely cock a hoop. Bless him. What what a game to have um, over there in fabulous stadium, and uh, and oh, they would have the crowd would have been going wild. And, well, and he's, it's he, a big and he's, sort of derby, isn't it? It's the big. Oh, it's, sort it's, of, it is, John. Yes, you know absolutely what I actually it is. Jordan um, Henderson's club. Jordan Henderson's club. I think they, they might be managed by Ten Hag again next season, I think, Ajax. <laughs> after, after, he's, after he's left Manchester United. and <laughs> But, uh, yeah, that was some result for the kid. Um, oh, yes. Wonderful, it, wonderful. And, yes, the league's yeah, great nowhere near the Premier League. The league's nowhere near the Premier League. But let's put it this way. The way our lot's been going down like nine pins this season, if he was yeah. at Newcastle, he would be playing now. The same as Miley's been playing, and the same as Anderson's been playing, and uh, and everyone else. The same as Lewis Hall recently has been playing, and Emil Kraft's been playing. If he was here, he'd be playing at this end because of the injuries we've had. The point is that we have talked about buying an outside right. 
in the summer we've talked mm -hmm. about buying center forward outside right center half left back but we have talked about an outside right not an outside left because obviously Barnes and gordon's available there were yeah. more than stockpiled there um so they'll do what they always do steve they'll bring him across he'll play for his pre-season and then they'll decide whether he goes back to Feyenoord or, or whether he stays and becomes part of our first team squad they did that with anderson didn't they he kept yeah. going out on yeah, loan yeah. and then eventually he did so well in america a pre-season for this season that we kept hold of him and put him in the squad and he's been unlucky you know that he was on fire pre-season and if he yeah. had managed to stay fit he would have played all the games that Miley has played. I don't mean that as any any uh, criticism of Miley because he's done terrific since he went in. 17 and what he's done. But Anderson sure. would have been ahead of him. If Anderson had been fit, Anderson would have had all those games under his belt. And um, he's beginning to show now, you know, what he's got and what he can offer in the future. Yeah. I mean, they, they're without looking back heel on the go on the winner we scored a fulham you know he did a back heel blind if you remember in the church back heel blind yeah. took out two defenders balls crossed panic when they, on barnes cross just wildly hooked out and we finish and um, anderson's going to be a good player and he benefited mm -hmm. by what he did pre-season and i bet this kid goes on tour pre-season with us and then they'll make a decision whether one more season out on loan before he comes to us or he stays with us the australian kid i think is much further back he will uh, uh, garen koal yeah he will be nowhere near the first team next season mm -hmm. he's a much more further back in the pecking order he will be out on loan again he's got a long way to come to be anywhere near our first team the other sure. one doesn't the other boy hasn't yeah but but it's a real fillip for all the youngsters at the club when they see what, what what's happened with miley this season anderson yeah. and what have you that um it, it, that must make them absolutely hungry to get better and better and better and of course um it's it's good for this lad over in holland um at the way that he's playing because how is not afraid to put youngsters in and literally to pluck them from uh, um from where they're playing and just say go on get in some go and do the business he did it with miley and it and it looked to me as if he just left miley just to find the pace of it himself um that he, he wasn't sort of being messed around he wasn't being shouted at he wasn't um sort of being told where to go and what to do they just left it to Miley in his in his for earlier games, and I thought that was lovely. And that they allowed him just to just to gently bed into the side, and certainly he did that. My, Miley and Anderson give us a tremendous base in midfield of young boys coming along. I mean, they could be the backbone of. You never know. People lose form, they get transferred, they get a bad injury, heaven forbid, etc., etc. But in Miley and Anderson. We look to have two players that have got a real future. Yeah. And, and, and brought, and local kids brought up through the academy. Yeah. 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 I would agree, man. I would agree. Mm -hmm. I think it's, yeah. um, it's, it's an exciting time, um, as far as youngsters, uh, development concerned at Newcastle. And let's hope it continues because, um, it's one thing that Dan Ashworth was given a remit to do and it looks like he has done it well. We have signed a lot of up and coming youngsters and hopefully we'll have a, a degree of success. Uh, with them, with them coming through, and and who, who knows? Uh, we you know we might have a, a few more local faces coming through as well. Is he um, as good with dandelions? Are you, I hope this isn't a Chris Wood reference. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's just that he, he's going. It's an interminable time, isn't it, for somebody um, who has just achieved all of that, yeah. and to be out and gardening leave and not <laughs> and not taking part. Not, <laughs> Yeah, I get you. Ashworth. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, well, blow him. Let him. Let him have the best loan in the in the country. Um, if he ain't going to be part of us, I've forgotten about him. Who's he again? Can you remember? <laughs> he, he only he only passed through here for a short while, didn't he? 
He did. He did. Uh, was, uh, yeah, very short while. Got to ask yeah. you about. Got to ask you about Bruno, lads. Um, you know, when when he was, you know, when when we were talking on the show, whenever we build up to the show, we always say he's got to avoid these bookends. He's got to avoid these bookends, otherwise he's going to be suspended. Um, I've got to give credit to him because playing in the role that he does, with the temperament that he's he's shown um, since he signed for the club, I think he's shown a sense of maturity here, Malcolm, to get all the way through to the Spurs game. Um, you know, without picking a booking up. Um, sure. I, I, you know, I, I don't know whether it's right to be praising somebody to do that or not, but I just think he's shown a, a different level of maturity to do that. And let's hope he gets through the Spurs game without picking a booking up. I've got to ask the question though: If he does pick a booking up, do you think he might go for a sending off by taking his shirt off or something? Wow! <laughs> like um, Anthony Gordon, you mean? Yes, yes, yes. The, the the interesting thing, the interesting thing with Bruno, and well done him because. I tell you what, recently you can make a case out where Bruno's carried the midfield. The, yes, form, yes. That, the form that Longstaff and Willock's been in or the lack of form that Longstaff and Willock's been in, he's carried the midfield and he's avoided yeah. all the bookings while carrying the midfield. And, and you know, he says when he scored the winner at Fulham, he's, he was going to take his shirt off and then he remembered one yes. more booking yeah. in his house. Now, there's yeah. two things we can say here, Steve. We can do what you've just done, which is terrific, and say, hasn't he shown maturity? And we must congratulate him. He hasn't been booked in 10 games or something so that he doesn't get a ban. You can flip the coin and say, if he can do it for 10 games, keep a grip Correct. in the other games because some of the bookings were absurd. And we, they, I mean, were, they were absolutely yeah. nonsense. It, it was if like he was sending an invitation to the referee to book him. Book, don't kick the ball away on a free kick. Don't yeah. do your nuts in on a throw in. Or so. You know, if we can bring that discipline permanently, then we've got yet another layer of a great player. Because I tell you what, that cur curtailing that ferocity and uh, showing some discipline hasn't spoiled his game. He still looked a terrific player. It hasn't mm. taken the edge. You know what they often say? You know, if you've got a wild man, you take away the wildness, you've only got half the player you would yeah. you would normally add. It, it hasn't proved that in the last 10 games. He's That's played right. as well during this, this period as he did before, and he's had no bookings. So why not, in the future, Bruno, do yourself a favour, the club a favour, mm. and the fans a favour, by just having that little bit of discipline? Because we yeah. want you in the team, we don't want you suspended. And by the way, if you get the chance, can you lock Gordon in a room with you and just tell him how you did it? Because um, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> he become a quiz. He become a quiz when he got sent off. There's fans immediately after the game saying to me, "Is he on eight bookings? Is he on nine bookings? Because he got another booking that game, or is he on ten bookings? Because he got two bookings in that game." So it was one of those. I mean, it was once you got this the first book in that game, he was better sent off, wasn't he? Because he just got mm -hmm. one match ban. Yeah. On, on totting up his bookings, he would have got a two match ban. But I mean, yes. I tell but you also, what. Also, compared, John, that, um, that, that they're very close now, aren't they, to, um, to having them all squashed? Gordon's squashed now. Gordon's on eight. Gordon's on yeah. eight, and there's only one match to come until it's all over. So if he booked yes. on Saturday, he's only got nine. So Gordon okay. is not going to be suspended. Yeah, and then he, he goes back. To, out. They all go back to zero. Yes, he's wiped out. Uh, right. Bruno's got one more match to go. That's the Spurs game, and if he survives right. that without the booking, he's wiped out. And he would have survived it if Steve hadn't put the mockers on him by saying, let's congratulate him on not getting booked. That's the biggest certainty that he's going to get booked on Saturday, of course. <laughs> Good stuff. Um, yeah, I've just got to talk a little bit about the women's team as well, lads. Um, they, they could clinch promotion uh, again this weekend. Um, the FA Women's National League Northern Premier Division title is on the line Sunday, 14th of April. Kicks off two o'clock. Uh, tickets on sale from the club 
in advance price at a fiver for adults and a pound for kids. Um, as well as leading the league standings, Newcastle have got the highest average attendance in the division, um, which was backed by a Kingston Park attendance of 4,256 when they beat Liverpool Feds 5-1 in their last match. And a crowd of 22,307 uh, went to see the February FA Cup, uh, FAWNL Cup semi-final win over Portsmouth women. Um, they're expecting another big attendance um, this Sunday. Um, lads, you know, we, we cover the men's team on here. We, we often talk a little bit about the, the women's team, but, you know, Malcolm, credit to them. You know, the you know Amanda mm. Stavely's put a lot of time and effort into the, to this personally as well. Credit to the yeah. women's team and uh, we wish them all the best over this weekend. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we certainly do. Um, the, um, I've, I've got to know one or two of them and, and they... And, and, but they're real dedicated pros, you know. So they've got to be taken seriously, um, and they. The game is, the game they play is 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 somewhat different to the men's football, which is why I would never want to commentate on on the ladies' football because it, I'm I'm too sort of used to to uh, men's football, um, but. What they do, they do very well indeed. There, there's some terrific skills from uh, from some of the players. Uh, the the lassie at Chelsea, um, James. James. Her, well, her he finishing, was a place for Chelsea and um, yeah, plays for the men's team, doesn't he? Oh, her finishing it it, it is sensational, uh, mm. and, and so for that, I, I enjoy watching it. I mean, no, I no. want I want Newcastle women's team to be in the in the top division, which yes. is the division that matters. And <clears> there's <throat> no uh, question about that. And, and the and, way and Amanda's be... backing uh, the women's team, and the way that the rest of the board are backing Amanda on that, it will happen. I mean, we went full time pro this season yeah. in a league that that hasn't got full time pros. And uh, mm -hmm. that's why we've. And when you get when you get twenty thousand going to St James's Park and you knock that into your average attendance for the season, you're going to have the best attendance. There's absolutely yes. no question. In the northeast, you know, has produced some wonderful, wonderful women players down the years, from you know uh, Stephanie Houghton all the way through Jill Scott, all the way through to Lucy Bonds, who was born. On Holy Island, for goodness sake. How can mm. you have voted World Women's Player of the Year, etc., etc.? How many of those type of players have been born on a place like Holy Island? I mean, there's only, there's only six people who live there and 20,000. Yeah. And she was born there. And yeah. born this Sorry, I can't make the fixture this afternoon. The tide's in. <laughs> because she's, And you know what, what saddened me at the time was that we have produced so many wonderful players in the girls game in the women's game over the years the northeast and they've all had to go and play for Sunderland because Sunderland was the only team of any consequence in the area Newcastle mm. were nowhere near that etc etc so they all played for Sunderland and good luck to Sunderland and Jill Scott and Houghton and F Lucy Blondes everybody played for Sunderland they won't have to go to Sunderland in the future they can play in black and white and that will gladden my heart and because when we get yeah. in the top division, it, it, it'll be us. And we will get in because the clubs put their, their whole strength and their whole power behind this for it to happen. And it will be good for the city and good for Newcastle United. So I'm 100% with them. Well done, girls, this season. Yes. Get yes. the job finished. You've done terrific. It, you got to the cup final. Never mind losing and by the way if you lose a cup final you don't want to lose to a side called hashtag what's a, what was all that about like i mean but the, you know the side that played hashtag United. yeah strange name i mean is it that's i mean i had people looking up on the on a map if, if great britain looking for the town of hashtag <laughs> wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't know where it come from mind that was older people but come on newcastle terrific you get the leg up next season and then one more push and you suddenly hit the big time and well done and that will be terrific to see and yes. um, i think the girls have got great support amongst the um 
uh, the Tyneside community. Anyway, in yeah. what is different, I think, about the women's game to the men's game, where the men's game can be tr quite tribal and has down all the years, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The women's game is almost like a family occasion, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The man go with his his young mm -hmm. wife and the three kids and they're on the terraces and they got the flags and it's a it's a family day out. Whereas our football, I'm talking about the football we've followed all our life since we were bands, the men's yeah. game is tribal, as yes. we saw with Rangers and Celtic and whatever at the weekend there, and we see with Newcastle and Sunderland. It's a different sort of atmosphere, but there's a wonderful family atmosphere at the women's game. Well done, then. Newcastle take on Spurs. Uh, this coming Saturday at lunchtime. It's a 12.30 kickoff. It is live on TNT Sports mm -hmm. once again. Kit sponsor Selleck confirmed that a special one-off shirt will be worn by Newcastle United's team against Tottenham Hotspur. Uh, the name of the charity yet to be released. Uh, the Saudi Arabian event management company are yet to donate the front of the shirt advertising to an as yet undisclosed charity for the game. Uh, team news, Joe Willock is uh, expected to be the latest name on a list of unavailable players, which includes mm. Nick Pope, Miguel Almiron, Tino Liveramento, mm. Matt Target, Jamal Lascelles, Sandro Tonali, Joe Linton, Sven Botman, and Lewis Miley. News on Kieran Trippier is still awaited. Uh, there is some talk of Callum Wilson readying himself for a comeback, uh, but there's nothing concrete in that news as yet. Uh, the striker has um, netted uh, in four of his five appearances for Newcastle United against Tottenham Hotspur. Uh, Spurs early team news, Ryan Sessegnon and Mana Solomon are both injured. Old boy Fraser Foster is still out of the squad. Richarlison is predicted to return to the squad for this game. On the road, well, this season, Ange Postagoglu's side have won six times. They've drawn six times and they've lost just three. Those defeats coming at Wolves, Brighton and at Fulham. Three of the last five away games have ended in scored draws and they've scored at least once in all but one of their 15 Premier League games away from home. Referee is Tim Robinson. This is a quick return to Newcastle United's fixtures uh, for the West Sussex referee. He oversaw our 3-0 home win over Wolves last month. Uh, before that, he was in charge of the 4-0 success against Crystal Palace at Gallagher and the 3-0 defeat at Everton. VAR is Stuart Atwell. If you can't get to the game, uh, it will be televised at Freight in the Big Market, Pumphrey's in the Big Market and the Dog and Paris on Clayton Street West. Wonderbar in the gate have also got it on. Uh, free entry, no reservations required uh, at that bar. So, uh, Tra uh, travel news as well. Tynebridge, don't forget the refurbishment program is underway. That's going to take four years, so uh, you're going to have to find ways and means of getting into Newcastle. Uh, other than over the Tyne Bridge, it'll be absolute chaos on the other bridges as well. So try and uh, bear that in mind when you're travelling by road and uh, check your train services as well. Uh, no strike action uh, planned for this weekend. Uh, thankfully, um, but there is a little bit of issues on the Metro, but uh, check with Nexus before you travel. The food bank will be outside the ground. The usual stall and bucket shakers will be on Strawberry Place and uh, Jamie Rubin will once again double all cash donations made on the match day. So, um, Tottenham come to town. Uh, we could do with a start like we had this, this time last year, Mal. Uh, five sure. goals up in 20-odd minutes. Yeah, couldn't we just... Uh, my word, that that was one of the most amazing 20 minutes of football that I've that I've witnessed in my life. Um, it really was. Uh, and Spurs were just so demoralised. And um, uh, and I, I, I it, it it seems to be something that they that they carry with them. Um, it, it, this demoralisation it, it, that. Um, against Nottingham Forest in the first 10 minutes or so Spurs looked demoralized and if I were Eddie Howe I would be playing on that you know get on top of them and when you're on top make sure you stay there um, and uh, and that's what we did to them last season and I, I look forward to us going and doing it again uh, and, and and we've got much to to play for and uh, um, and as much to win for um, it, because uh, we're looking as if there is every possibility of getting a European place and 
we have got to make sure that we don't lose at home. John, huge game this because, as you mentioned at the start of the programme, Newcastle win this. They're right back amongst it. They're back amongst it now, but this would really cement a push for Europe. Totally, totally. Because this is one of the few difficult games on paper. I know our difficulties when we play the lesser sides rather than when we play the big sides uh, as results have shown this season. But there's only this and possibly Man U because it's a way, but we've already beaten them twice. Um, did look of any sort of um, tough variety. And, and both sides have got something to play for. They're in the top four for the first time in Yonks. And, and we are really six, seven points out of nine, really going for a European place. You know, the amazing thing with Spurs is that when Harry Kane left, everybody thought Spurs would fall apart because yeah. Kane's goals have kept them afloat for years. And everybody thought big hands coming in. Oh, yeah, sure. He, but he had it easy. It, it's uh, Celtic. The only challenge Celtic had was uh, Rangers. And the Rangers challenge isn't what it used to be in the old days. So perhaps he, he, he had an easy life up there. But he's done terrific. He's brought the club philosophy back, which is we play on the front foot, not the back foot. But by the way, Eddie Howe's done exactly the same in Newcastle. We played on the back foot and Steve Bruce will play on the front foot and Eddie Howe. So, so that's terrific. But I mean, they've got good players. And if you're four top, you're going to have good players. And the one person that seems to have benefited to a certain extent by Kane not being there, Song, who yeah. had looked not so good last season, yeah. but he now looks the wonderful player we know yeah. that he is. And he is a wonderful player. And they've got Madison back, which Allison, who could be back this weekend, has suddenly got the form that makes him look like a Brazilian international um, rather than this fellow that was lost when he first left Everton and, and, and went to Spurs. It's going to be it's going to be tough, but then that's what the Premier League is. It's tough. And it's not impossible. Uh, ironically, and when I looked it up, I was quite surprised, you know, that Spurs have lost less games away from home than at home. They've only lost three games away from home in the Premier League. They've lost four at home in the mm -hmm. Premier League. Mm -hmm. But the one near the 12, mind, at home, which is which is the huge difference. But they've only lost three times away, so they don't get beaten away. And as you said, Steve, recently they've had a few draws away. They don't get beaten easily away from home. But I think our tails have gone up uh, by getting seven points out of nine. I think we are better against the good sides, whether it's mentally... Uh, the fear is taken out of it. It's a challenge. Come on, let's get in there. The crowd's up for it. We are up for it. Let's make it a match. And we'll get results. We've beaten Aston Villa on the way. We've beaten Manchester United twice. We've beaten Manchester City. We've beaten Paris Saint-Germain. We've beaten Arsenal. So that it, it's no games are right off when we play the good sides. And mm. this is a good side, but it's not as good as Manchester City, who we've beaten. It's not as good as Arsenal, who we've beaten. And Paris Saint-Germain, are playing in the quarterfinals of the European uh, of the Champions League, and we took their backside mm -hmm. out 4 1 up here. So we're beating the sides that are better than the Spurs. So I'm going for us to beat Spurs. Now we'll win, but I'm going for us to beat Spurs. Scoreline's 2 1. I'm going for John. What about you? Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. I'm not going for the old and um, the old uh, clean sheet because we've just run out of clean sheets by playing Fulham getting clean sheets so often against Fulham, there's no clean sheets left. So I'm going to Dale score as well, because they are an attacking side. But 2-1 would be my forecast, yes. But Newcastle to win, certainly. Malcolm, what about you? Yeah, well, um, it, it, if Spurs are looking at any particular weakness, I think it's in midfield with Newcastle. But uh, um, Willocks won't be playing. Uh, he's out. So... Um, and presumably it'll be Anderson playing in his place. And I think yeah. that strengthens us up. Um, uh, and so uh, 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 um, with, with Bruno, he, he's, at, he's on absolute top form at the moment. He really is. And he, 
and, and a, a goal just sparks him off. Um, and so uh, I'm, I'm looking for big things from him um, against Spurs this uh, Saturday lunchtime. And so um, I, I think that uh, <laughs> um, uh, you two guys have, have, have um, stolen the scoreline that I was going to say because I you think can it's still two say it, one as well. You can two one as well. Yeah, two one as well. Well, let's hope we're all right, lads. Let's hope we're all right. Uh, look forward to seeing you, gents, next week with a smile on your face. Uh, have a good week. Enjoy the weekend, and uh, look forward to seeing you then. Take care, lads. Indeed. Take care. All the everyone. best. All the best.